What up, HyperChange? Welcome to another episode. Today, we're talking about Beyond Meat. This is one of the hottest IPOs that has hit Wall Street recently. The stock has soared in early trading. It's the first a clean meat company to IPO, you know, scratching the surface of a huge new market and movement of consumers wanting to reduce the carbon emissions and environmental footprint of what they eat. I think this is, you know, right up HyperChange's alley of, of changing the world for better, uh, making things more sustainable that aren't. And so uh, today, we're going to cover, you know, everything about the Beyond Meat IPO, how the pricing went down why this was such a crazy opening and why the valuation got so crazy. And then we're going to go through the financials, ton of hyper charts lined up, and we're going to figure out, you know, is this fairly valued? Does it make sense? What's my analysis? All of that and more. Super excited. So let's get right into it. I want to talk about the mechanics of this IPO just to give you a little bit of insight into how the IPO process works because Beyond Meat had all the signs of an explosive offering before they even started listing. So, uh, you know, here we see the first couple articles coming out. Beyond Meat aims to price stock uh, between 19 to 21 per share listing 8.75 million shares. So this is what how the IPO process works. Companies, when they're ready to go public, uh, do a roadshow with investment bankers, uh, lining up to investors, trying to figure out where to price the stock, um, and they give a little range. And so when you see, um, and so they announced 19 to 21 dollars, and then just a couple weeks later, as they started showing it to investors, you know, CNBC starts reporting that now they've upped the range from 19 to 21 to 23 to 25 per share. And instead of offering that 8.75 million shares, they're offering 9.2 to five, uh, 9.6 million shares. So that's a really, really strong sign when you see an IPO that is raising its price and raising its amount offered um, heading into the listing. That's the opposite of what Uber's done, shrinking its price and shrinking its size. Um, but anyway, so then we have that Beyond Me last week opens trading at um, pricing the IPO at the high end of the range, 25 per share, opens trading around 46 per share, and then closes the day in the 60s per share. As I'm making this episode, the stock is about $70 per share. So Beyond Me is right now trading uh, you know, originally pricing, it's wanting to price its IPO around 20 bucks. And now it's hit the public market at 70, you know, more than a triple from that originally planned IPO price. So that shows you how much explosive and how much pent up demand there has been uh, for this Beyond Meat IPO. For those of you guys who haven't been following the story and aren't too familiar with the company, Beyond Meats is a startup founded about 10 years ago by Ethan Brown based in Los Angeles. And their goal is to, you know, essentially allow you to eat the meat you love, but drastically reduce the uh, carbon and environmental footprint of that. So their products are essentially plant-based meat. So they replicate, you know, their main flagship product is the Beyond Burger, which basically looks and tastes very similar to a burger, but is completely plant-based and vegan. And so they have the Beyond Sausages, which are the same type of deal with sausages and they have beef crumbles and they have taco crumbles. Over the long term, I think you're going to see Beyond Meat expand to a ton of different meat, poultry uh, uh, categories, everything that is an animal-based product. And so uh, Beyond Meat is tackling this huge opportunity. You know, I, I bucket them in this list of clean meat disruptors along with Impossible Foods, um, who is, is super successful. I've done an episode on them uh, doing the, actually that Shake Shack should buy them for Moonshot Monday. Then you have Memphis Meats, another company in this space that is actually trying to grow real animal cells in the Petri dish. Um, and then and you have Beyond Meats, which is, you know, more a traditional veggie burger. So different approaches in the space. Um, but the common theme here is that there is a massive opportunity to reduce global meat consumption. And so um, I want to hop into the S1 for Beyond Meat quickly. Uh, this is the filing they did for their IPO to just show you the kind of high level business that they're planning here. So Right in the overview, it says, our brand commitment, eat what you love, represents our strong belief that by eating plant-based meats, consumers can enjoy more, not less, of their favorite meals, and by doing so, help address concerns related to human health, climate change, resource conservation, and animal welfare. So this is a huge opportunity and fundamental shift that Beyond Meat is going for, where consumers are becoming cognizant of the impact that their food um, and their diet has on the environment and their health. Personal side note, hugely relate to this because I've reduced my red meat consumption significantly in the past year and just become a lot more aware of what I've been eating the more I educate myself about the food system and the impacts it have because, you know, I'm a huge climate advocate. I'm a Tesla shareholder because I love what they're doing on the transportation front. But the other big industry that, that is really ruining the planet and environment is agriculture. And a lot of that is meat consumption. And I know that's a really touchy subject for a lot of people. But personally, I've been trying to eat less meat because, you know, I really care about my environmental impact. And I think that is the trend um, and that is the consumer wave that Beyond Meat is getting behind that is super powerful. 
powerful. And, you know, to put some numbers behind that opportunity, this is a $1.4 trillion global meat industry that they are tackling. And so that is why investors are so excited about these impossible foods, about these Beyond Meats and Memphis Meats. The bigger the problem, the bigger the opportunity. That is my favorite mantra for investing. And I think this could not be more true in this, you know, the bigger, the huge problem that a trillion dollars worth of crappy meat products are being consumed every year is a huge opportunity to replace that with something better. And that is exactly what we have these companies doing. I love it. And so just to give you a little bit of flavor of, of how this transition is happening for consumers here, they give this beautiful example where in the United States, the current size of the non-dairy milk category is equivalent to approximately 13% the size of the dairy milk category. According to the mental report, the non-dairy milk category was estimated to be approximately 2 billion in 2017. So milk, you maybe have noticed like oat milk at your favorite cafe, you know, there's almond milk, they're, sw they're getting off of dairy milk. And that, that is sort of a leading indicator of what Beyond Meats is going to happen to the, the beef category. And so in the milk category, these alternatives took 13% of the market in just the past couple of years and have exploded to a $2 billion business in the US. So this shows you that, you know, these meat, these, these animal protein alternatives are gaining significant traction, multi-billion dollar markets already. Now that we, I talked to you a little bit about the, you know, business opportunity and why I'm so excited about that, let's jump into hypercharts here and check out the company's financials under the hood. So welcome to Hypercharts World. Today we are looking at, uh, right now we're looking at the revenue and operating income line for Beyond Meats. Uh, this will give you a great flavor for what's happening on the business, a ton of insight from we can glean from this chart. Let's just start by clicking on re revenue here to sort of zoom in on it. Um, this is hypercharts.co. This is my Hypercharts account, hypercharts.co slash BYND. If you want to follow along, I'll put a link in the description. Uh, so here you go. You can see revenue, and this is on a quarterly basis, has been exploding in the past couple quarters. I mean, this is an astronomically, this is a growth company, you know, this is a crazy growth company, 31.5 million in revenue in Q4, you know, up from 11.5 million in revenue in Q4 last year. So way over 100% growth. Um, and then if we add in gross profit, what I think is really interesting and the most fundamental transformation in, in Beyond Meat's business, which we're going to get dive into later, but I think is is this gross profit analogy. Like they, 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 they you know, were very, very low on making profits on their actual alternative meat products until just recently. And as they've hit economies of scale, they've really gained their groove and been able to massively grow the gross profit of their of their company. So not only are they exploding in revenue, but the profitability of that revenue is exploding as well. 7.9 million in gross profit in Q4, which doesn't seem huge, but that's compared to 0.9 million in gross profit in Q4 2017. So we had like an 8x increase in gross profit and like a triple in revenue uh, year over year in Q4. So incredible growth numbers. And then if we just take the operating income here, you'll see that this has been pretty consistent. So even though they've been exploding the business in terms of revenue, their loss have stayed pretty consistent around this sort of, you know, six, seven, eight, or nine, 10 million a quarter range. And they actually pre recorded Q1, it's about the same spot. Um, here's net income, kind of the same as EBIT, so we'll skip that. But this is a really fascinating chart that I think also highlights the biggest trend in their business. When I was saying the gross margin is inflecting positive, um, you know, we are seeing a company that is greatly improving margins quarter over quarter and bottom line profitability, even though they're still not making money. Um, and then this is the operating expenses of, uh, uh, Beyond Meat, I think it's interesting to note that their R&D is big and growing, but SG&A is much bigger. So it's more of a sales company than an R&D company, uh, which might throw you a little bit by surprise. Um, then moving down here, last thing is revenue growth. I mean, this is what we already touched on, but 180% in Q3, uh, 173 or 174% in Q4. So this is an explosive uh, growing revenue business. And if we look at the annual financial statements, uh, just to get a, a sense of what the business did in 2018, looking at 88 million in revenue, uh, 18 million gross profit and a loss of about $28 million. And so at a high level here, what you're looking at Beyond Meats is we have an explosively fast growing company with greatly improving underlying economics in terms of the gross profit and the actual dollars of profit that they uh, are making from each patty they sell is increasing and the amount of patties they sell is increasing, indicating that people are loving their products. So here, uh, back to the S1, Beyond Meat says that over the next few years, the main driver of our net revenue growth is expected to be fresh products, especially the Beyond Burger. So that is set to be the, the driver of, of growth. And the burger alone could be a billion dollar product. So even though they already have like a 100 million plus run rate, I think them focusing on just the burger of the avenue for growth is, is the right strategy. And that's what they're doing. 
And they say here, um, by the end of 2019, by the first quarter of 2019, we expect to triple our monthly capacity as compared to the end of the second quarter of 2018. So this is, you know, the other thing you got to think about this company is they're a production company. They're actually needing to build and manufacture all of these patties. And that's a huge operation. And that constraint on capacity could be a huge constraint on growth. And they even say that our net revenue growth has been significantly constrained relative to what we believe for total demand opportunity. So they're like Tesla. They're saying that our biggest problem for growth is not that people don't want to buy it. It's that we can't build them fast enough. That's the same problem that Tesla has. That is my favorite problem for businesses to have. Too many people want to buy the product. Our biggest problem is scaling up fast enough. That's what they're claiming their issue is. Then here, they give us even more clarity into breaking down the business, which I think is fascinating, um, breaking it down by different sort of like fresh, frozen, retail, and food service. The fresh platform here is exploding up 351%. And like they said, they, the fresh burger is the main driver of that growth. And that's what they want to focus on. Frozen platform actually shrunk in 2018. And that's becoming much less of a focus for the company. Um, and now if we go look at the, the retail food service breakdown, this is what gets me really excited about Beyond Meats. If you look at that retail line, they're growing almost 100%. Retail is like a grocery store when you buy it off the shelf. And then we have restaurant and food service, which is when you'll buy it at like a and Canada or you know a restaurant where they prepare it for you. And that's up, you know, almost 424%. So this is a company with explosive growth in both retail and food service and restaurant. That's a super good sign. Now, let's get into the main overall financials here on an annual basis. Uh, this is the same data we had in hypercharts here. But once again, the line I want you to pay attention here is that gray line, that huge flip from negative 2 million in gross profit to positive 18 million. You know, that's the underlying economics that is going to drive profitability. And so if we take a look at this quarterly gross margin, um, I, you know, zooming into this, you can see, I just wanted to highlight this of just how much improvement, how fast is happening on the gross margin of Beyond Meat and how quickly the economics are changing. I mean, this is a company that four, five quarters ago or six quarters ago was doing under 5% gross margin and now is doing 25%. That's a quintuple in profitability. That means for every dollar in revenue they sold, they used to make five cents in gross profit. Now it's 25 cents, a quintuple. I mean, this is really the fundamental shifts in economics. And they also give us a little snapshot and preview of Q1 2019, which I think is awesome. Uh, net revenue expected to be 39 million. That would be another record, almost basically 160 million revenue run rate right now. And then gross margin expected to be between 25 and 26.3%. So they're expecting continued improvements in that gross margin line. So I took this all together to sort of extrapolate what I think is going to happen to Beyond Meat. And this isn't really expecting new products. This is sort of them just expanding the Beyond uh, Meat burger and their sausages and the, and the crumbles. And I have revenue growth, uh, you know, exploding to about 175 million in 2019, which I actually think is conservative because they're doing about 40 million in revenue in Q1. If you annualize that, that's 160 million revenue run rate in Q1. Like I'm not assuming that much growth in the back half of this year. So I thought that was pretty conservative. I assume that overall gross margin of 30% for the year, remember slightly above that 25 and 26 in Q1. And then, uh, so that's why I got to the 2019 estimates uh, for 2020. I assume that we have a hundred percent revenue growth. So once again, revenue goes slows uh, to 350 million. The gross profit improves to 35%. Then we get to 123 million in gross profit. And that leads me, and I still assume that OPEX went from like 78 million to, you know, over 100 million to like 120, 110 million. So I assume huge growth in OPEX, but still they're able to eke out a small profit in 2020 based on that huge revenue growth and based on the underlying economics. So now let's talk about the fundamental valuation of this company and whether I think it's fair or not. So right now trading at $70 per share, Beyond Me is trading at a valuation at, with about 60 million shares outstanding at about $4.2 billion market cap. So, you know, this is a company trading for $4.2 billion that is uh, in this year, 2019, according to my estimates, is going to do $175 million in revenue and lose about $25 million in operating income. With $4.2 billion divided by $175 million, we're looking at a, a 24 times price sales ratio. So, and I know that everyone in the stock market is saying like, oh my gosh, this is absurd. This is crazy. Like this should be a software company if it's trading remotely at that high multiple. Like, I, so I get that that's a really high price sales multiple, um, but I think it's actually not as crazy as people think because if you extrapolate the growth to 350 million the next year, the price sales ratio com compresses to like 12X based on 2020, which is really only a year away. And, and there's so much up in the air. You know, this is a growth company. They're growing above 100%, attacking a $1.4 trillion category is one of the first movers with the best products on the market. So, you know, from a high level, taking a step back, I'm going to put on my anthropologist brain for a second. You know, humans, we've been 
we, you know, since we've been farming and eating, our food system has basically been a victim of industrialization. And we've industrialized the food system with the goal of basically making the cheapest hamburger. And this is related into, you know, I call it like the McDonald's industrialization culture. And it's related in this incredible wave of factory farming here in the U.S. where the, the meat system and like this is something that I actually worked in a food company for six months. And I went to farms visiting, talking to farmers, saw pasture raised cows, saw factory farm cows and like. I don't know. I was just really, it was, it left like a lifelong impression for me that I'll never forget of going to this factory. And like, as long as I could see like football fields down of like cows in metal grates that they're like poking out of the sides of up to here in their own manure and shit. And that is like the status quo of the bulk of the beef industry. When you're getting cheap meat, when you're getting McDonald's burgers, when like you're getting fast food, you're getting such quality fact, such low quality factory farm meat that it's disgusting. And like, I've also been doing more research into the dairy industry and like, I don't know, I'm just, and I know it's, I grew up drinking milk and loving steak. You know, I, I think um, it's very hard to get off this meat consumption train, but I think when you think about us as humans eating animals, the agricultural system, how much damage that's putting to the planet, how much land we're using, how much carbon and methane that's causing to emit, how much stress that's putting on the transportation system, how that's such not healthy food for our individuals. Like, sure, we've gotten the cost down and industrialized and standardized all of these foods, but now we're realizing the ex- externalities of that food system, at least here in the U.S., is awful, you know? And and I, it's a really a shame to me, and I think you know, if there's, we need to hyper change transportation, but we need to hyper change the food industry even more. And this is why I'm very passionate about Beyond Meats and these clean meat companies and rooting for them to just make amazing products because without amazing products, people aren't going to switch and there's never going to be a change. But I'm getting hopeful now because we're seeing Beyond Meats exploding in revenue over around $160 million revenue run rate. They're going way faster than 100%. People are loving the product. I mean, they're this is a $1 trillion problem. So if you think at a high level of replacing a huge chunk of human meat consumption with these plant-based products, the opportunity is massive. We are just scratching the surface and in the infancy of a fundamental cultural shift, if you believe in this thesis, that people are going to get away from eating these factory farm products. And I think that's a good thing. I think that's what we need. And so I'm rooting for Beyond Meat. And getting back to the financials and valuation here, I think you have to look at this as sort of still a startup venture capital bet. You know, they're still a long runway for growth. They're still early in the days of improving their unit economics. They're still early in the days of their product roadmap. Um, They're still early in the days of forging long-term relationships with consumers and customers. And so I think there's a lot of, opportunity this fails and doesn't work and doesn't take off and goes bankrupt and nobody makes money but is there a lot of opportunity for this to reinvent a significant portion of that meat industry and become a 10 20 30 billion dollar company in the next five years or the next decade yes and so that is why i don't think this valuation is crazy and i think you know beyond meat is tackling a real opportunity the bigger the problem the bigger the opportunity there's a handful of these trillion dollar climate issues and industries that are ruining the planet that need urgent change that present incredible opportunities transport energy and food and i think this is the first time we i anyway so i think you know they're the only clean meat ipo i think a lot of investors see the future that i've been laying out and want to get involved so that's accelerating the, the valuation as well um and so yeah that is what it is you know in my first video about beyond meats when i just read the financials and like thought what i would value it at i was like i'll probably buy it at a, a 500 million dollar valuation i thought it would be a little expensive at a billion now it's trading at four billion so i was way low. I I wouldn't buy it here because I don't think, you know, like I said, 10 to 20 billion, I think is very possible for this company, but I'm only getting like a quadruple or quintuple on my money in that scenario. And I don't think the risk reward is quite justified given how much execution they have to go, how much competition's coming, etc. Anyway, that's my review of Beyond Meats. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments below. I'm also going to do a taste test of the Beyond Meat burger. Got to do my due diligence, try the product itself. So I'm going to film that, upload it to the channel. Me and my friends who love normal burgers, who have never tried the Beyond Burger are going to try it and cook it up and tell you if it's the real deal and lives up to the hype. So stay tuned for that as well. Huge shout out to our Patreon producers, uh, funding the channel. Really appreciate that. I'll see you guys next time. Peace.